Hey, are you considering moving into the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, but you're a little confused because you've heard of so many great places to live like Frisco, Allen, Plano, McKinney, Salina. Well, in this video, we are going to introduce you to the city of Dallas, and we are going to give you our top picks of pros and cons of living and moving into the Dallas area. So sit back, buckle up, because we're gonna get you moving to Dallas, Texas right now. Saludos y bienvenido a nuestro canal y a la ciudad de Dallas, Texas. If you want to know everything there is to know about eating, living, playing, working in Dallas, or really any of the Dallas, Texas suburbs, then subscribe below, tap that notification bell so that you can be the first to know about the current market in Dallas, Texas. Hey, my name's Marilyn, this is my husband, Mike, and we get calls every single day from people just like you who are looking to move into the area, and we just love it. So whether you are moving in a few days, in a few weeks, in a few months, call us, text us, email us. We would love to help you make that smooth move into the Dallas area. Over the past couple of decades, Dallas has grown into a major city that offers its residents plenty of opportunity to live, work, and play. So that's why weighing the pros and cons is very important to deciding on which city you're going to move to. Here are a couple of our top picks of pros and cons, and remember, these are in no particular order. All right, so the first pro is bigger homes for less money. Take, for example, this home here in Redwood City, California. It's currently listed for um, $988,000. It's an 890 square foot home. It's uh, two bedrooms, one full bath, and according to the description, mm -hmm. it needs over $200,000 worth of renovations and upgrades put into it. This will end up costing a new buyer over a million dollars and lots of work, making the price per square foot on this home $1,100 per square foot. Now, let's look at this home currently listed in Dallas, mm -hmm. and this home is selling for $1,050,000. It's a 2023, so it's a brand new construction. This home measures 3,426 square foot. It's a three bedroom, five bath home with a two car garage. The price per square foot on this mm -hmm. home is $306. I don't know about you, but do the math. Which one would you prefer mm -hmm. to live in? So pro number two is a thriving job market. The job market in Dallas is thriving and the current unemployment rate as of May, 2023 is 4.1%. Texas still has over 1 million job openings and Dallas continues year over year to lead the job market in large metropolitan areas. There are many Fortune 500 companies that are moving into the area basically because they don't have to pay the corporate tax. We did a video of that recently called Dallas, Texas Real Estate Market in 2023, so make sure you go and check it out. Some of the largest employers in Dallas are AT&T, Southwest Airlines, Walmart, American Airlines, Capital One, and Bank of America. Now, if you prefer to work for a smaller company, the Dallas Chamber of Commerce has provided a list of smaller companies that employ less than 2,000 people, and we're gonna provide that in a link below so you can check it out. So, wherever you're preferring to work in Dallas, there should be no problem finding a job at a big company or a small company. Pro number three, no state income tax. That's right, Texas doesn't charge you a state income tax and it also does not charge mm -hmm. corporations um, a tax to do business in the state of Texas. Now, you still will have to follow your federal income tax. You will also have to pay sales tax and then obviously if you own a home, you're gonna have to pay property taxes on that as well as other taxes and assessments that you may incur with uh, through other taxing authorities mm -hmm. when you own a home in the state of Texas. So pro number four is green space. So Dallas has one of the best park systems in the country and it's only getting better. The Dallas-Fort Worth metro area is built along the Trinity River and the Trinity River corridor project when it's complete will eventually be 10 times the area of New York Central Park. Now, if you're moving here from New York, I apologize, we're gonna beat you in that respect, but let's keep an eye on the Trinity River project. The Dallas Park System is one of the largest in the nation and it includes over 397 parks 
and 20,118 acres of green space. So if you like fishing, kayaking, or just getting out on the water, Dallas is one of the best places for you to call home. There are so many lakes within the Dallas city limits and just a little bit outside that you really don't have to go far to enjoy water activities. You don't even have to own a boat as there are a lot of places where you can go and rent a boat for the day and enjoy your time out on the lake. So if you prefer dry ground, there are endless outdoor spaces that you can enjoy. Dallas has over 60 plus miles of hike and bike trails, 45 plus recreation centers, 230 playgrounds, 170 basketball courts, 100 volleyball courts, and over 250 tennis courts. So plenty to keep you busy in the Dallas area on the water or on land. Pro number five is Dallas's nightlife. As most major cities, Dallas's nightlife is very vibrant. And there are some hot spots that are worth mentioning. Number one, there's Deep Ellum. Deep Ellum is located near downtown on the east side of downtown Dallas. During the day, Dallas has a very vibrant atmosphere with all its murals and pretty quirky type of art museums that you can find. But in the evening, there is plenty to do because at night it becomes Dallas's headquarters for music and for bars. So we're gonna include a link below so that you can explore all the possibilities that Deep Ellum has to have when it comes to nightlife. Mm. The second on the list for Dallas's nightlife is Uptown. Now Uptown is located north and adjacent to downtown Dallas, and it's mostly centered around McKinney Street. Uptown, it's known for its eclectic bars and restaurant scene. There's a large number of mixed sports bars, bistros, and some pretty hip cocktail mm -hmm. lounges. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, or on, on, an, on a side note, Uptown is also a really popular place, um, you know, for young urban professionals to live because it has that urban feel. And most of its residents do rent um, apartments or homes or townhomes over there. The last place to mention is Dallas, downtown Dallas, which is the heart of the city. And over the last two decades, downtown Dallas really has become the mecca for nightlife with its, you know, hip lounges, um, neighborhood pubs, and it has a lot of venues where they do have live music. So check it out. Now, bear in mind that these areas are within the Dallas city limits. So right outside the city and other surrounding mm -hmm. areas, you're gonna find plenty to do, so check those out as well. So pro number six is professional sports. So man, this one's for you. So football is big in Texas. So chances are in the fall, if you're a sports fan, you're either watching Friday night high school football. That's where Friday night lights originated. You're probably gonna watch some college football on Saturday afternoon. And Sundays are probably spent watching professional football, the Dallas Cowboys, or if you're lucky, one of your other professional football team uh, favorites will be on the local channel here. So if you're not into football, there's plenty of other sports to watch around the Dallas area. We have the Dallas Stars uh, hockey team that plays at the American Airlines Center. The Dallas Mavericks also play at the American Airlines Center. And if you want to venture a little bit outside the city limits and travel over to Arlington, the Cowboys play at AT&T Stadium. And right next door to them, the Texas Rangers play at a uh, Globe Life Field. Uh, we also have FC Dallas, the professional soccer team that plays north in Frisco at the Toyota Stadium. All right, so you can't have all pros and mm -hmm. not any cons. And so, as we mentioned, we do have a few cons. And again, these are not in any particular mm -hmm. order. But the first con that we're going to mention are steep property taxes and various mm -hmm. assessments, which we kind of covered as a pro when it came to not paying any state taxes, state income tax. Even though Texas doesn't have a state income tax, there are other taxing authorities that the residents of Dallas do have to pay. And the biggest one of these really in Dallas and in mm -hmm. all the other surrounding suburbs are your property taxes. So the Dallas residents, they have an average of 1.81% mm -hmm. of tax rate on the mark fair market value of their home. So for example, if your home is worth $400,000, your property taxes are gonna be about $7,200. Now bear in mind that mm -hmm. we do have the homestead exemption and other exemptions in the state of Texas. So these are unexempted taxes. 
Now, the property tax may not include various um, dues and assessments that exist within each individual communities. And they may be HOAs, MUDs, PIDs that, again, will exist uh, in various communities. So do keep in mind that that may be additional costs that you'll have to bear. Another thing to bear in mind is your property taxes will increase with each year that the fair market value of your home increases. We all want a higher property values when it comes to selling our home, but we don't want those higher property values when it comes to paying our taxes. You know, lastly, you may ask, well, why are property taxes in Texas so high and what do they pay mm -hmm. for? Well, they go to pay for school districts, for uh, emergency services, for libraries, uh, continuing education, they go, they pay for the uh, improvements of roads, repairs, and expansion, and they also pay for the local government and administration, like their salaries. So feel free to leave a comment below if you want further explanation on the taxes or assessments in the Dallas area. We'd love to be able to answer those for you. So con number two is the weather. The weather in Dallas is pretty moderate, ranging in about the mid 70s for most of the year. So out of the 12 months, Dallas will experience eight months of amazing weather. It is not unusual to have 75 degree days on Thanksgiving and Christmas and maybe New Year's. But Dallas can experience some pretty severe weather and most of them will be storms and they could be either in the, either in the shape of either tornadoes, high damaging winds, severe hail storms, severe snow and ice storms. And of course, during the summer, it can get sweltering hot. So there's a wide range of weather patterns to put up with in the Dallas area. But again, these weather patterns are few and far between when you compare it to the rest of the nation. In Dallas, we have a common saying, if you don't like the weather, give it 24 hours. And this is so true. We can have temperatures of zero and 12 hours later, the sun is shining and it's 80 degrees and you're out having a great time. All right, so the last and final con that we're gonna talk about is traffic and the lack of public transportation. The traffic in Dallas is horrible and there's really just no other way to put it. No matter where you go in Dallas, you're gonna experience road construction, repairs, and expansion, which makes it a nightmare when you are driving back and forth in it. Everywhere that you travel in Dallas, expect to see the Texas Department of Transportation at work. This is great, but it comes at a greater cost to the Dallas mm -hmm. drivers. So if you drive the improved highways for quicker access, expect to pay tolls on these improved roadways. Mm -hmm. Now we did mention the lack of public transportation. Dallas, of course, does offer some public transportation, but it doesn't compare to the mass transit mm -hmm. systems that you're gonna find like in New York City, Chicago, California, right. and a lot of the other major cities in the United States. Now, of course, there are Ubers and Lyft mm -hmm. that you can take, but these come at a great cost, so you decide. So that about wraps us up on the pros and cons of moving to Dallas. And we want to thank you guys for sticking yes. around to the end. And we hope that this video has provided you with a little bit of insight of moving into the Dallas area. So make sure you leave a comment below if you enjoyed this video or if there's more information that you're looking for so we can get in contact with you. And again, if you are considering making a move into the Dallas area within the next few days, the next few weeks, the next few months, Call us, text us, email. All our information is down below. We'd love to help you make that smooth move into the Dallas area. But until then, mm -hmm. we look forward to showing you around town the next time. Take care, guys. All right. Bye-bye.